welcome to the second episode of our online Zoom talk show with the faculty. I'm Zainab and I'm your host today. We have our Associate Dean of our business school and our soon-to-be Associate Provost here, Professor Nirma Mukhapadhyay and Brian Louis, who is a second-year global business student in our business school. And today, we're going to be talking about some personal life-changing experiences and share our opinions about our business school and then the general education theme here at HKUSD. And then, since Professor Mukhapadhyay is our soon-to-be Associate uh, provost, we will get to hear about his vision and ideas about the undergraduate studies here at HUSD. And without further ado, I want to get to know our guests a bit more. Brian, hello. Would you like to share a bit about yourself? Sure, nice to meet you guys. So I'm Brian. Uh, I'm an Australian Hong Konger rising, in, rising to year two this year. I majoring in global business and minoring in psychology. So right now, I'm mainly doing product development at a small startup, and I'm also working as the founder and designer of my own design startup, Pella81. I'm really honored here uh, to meet the professor here today. Great, thank you so much. And now, Professor, can we get to know you a little bit? Hi, um, thanks for inviting me, Zainab um, and Brian. Um, I'm Anirban, I have uh, the Associate Dean of the Business School for Academic Affairs. Um, academic programs. I've been in this role for five years, and like you said, I'm now going to start as the associate provost for the university. Um, I'm a marketing professor. I'm a psychologist, um, and in a previous life, in my undergraduate studies, I um, uh, did physics, actually, uh, and I've worked in a bank, so I have a few different experiences I can share with you today, and looking forward to this chat. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming, professor. Now, I actually want to move on and ask you what were some of the life-changing experiences in your life and what these have taught you? Okay, um, so this is a big question, right? Um, I think uh, you don't realize a life-changing experience when it's happening. You often realize it in retrospect. Um, and in retrospect, I've seen that um, my life has taken a lot of random turns, which at that time, I think I would characterize as failures. So, but now I realize they weren't so bad after all. So I'll give you a couple of examples. When I was 14, um, I decided that I love physics and I want to be a physicist. And so I set my heart on attending one particular university after high school called the Indian Institute of Technology in Bombay. They had a program in physics, um, but there was a nationwide entrance exam and I did not get in. So I was extremely disappointed and dejected and I got into my second choice um, university, which was based on my high school grades. And in my first year in university, everyone was like, okay, this guy is a geek, he's a physicist. The other people majoring in physics are just there to get a degree and have some fun maybe. But this guy, he wants to do physics. Um, but then what happened was at the end of the year, we had end of year examinations and I did really badly in those, um, really badly. And so then I spent a lot of time on my bed looking at my ceilings and, okay, this is how life ends. My life is over. <laughs> it's been a good 20 years. <laughs> Um, but then, you know, I pick myself up and I start going on with my life. And then I realize, okay, I can still get into graduate school. So after my college, I got admission to Oxford University, which is a great university. But for whatever reason, I didn't get funding. And so I did not go to Oxford to become a physicist. And instead, I had just taken an MBA entrance exam just because all my friends were taking it. And I did well and I got into that. And so I said, okay, fine, maybe let me try this instead. Um, because this is where life is showing me. So every time, uh, you know, things have taken me somewhere. After that, I worked in a bank and then that didn't work out. So um, it's, it's been like a pinball, but it seems to have worked out okay, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and what about you, Brian? What were some life-changing experiences for you? I think there were like two main experiences that I, that like really changed the way I think recently. Um, because, of, you know, we're in such a unique situation. I feel like Firstly, quarantine has forced me to live with myself for once. I, normally, I'm a very social person, so I'm used to meeting new people every single day and like talking to people and living my life through conversation. However, like in the time I forced myself to stay at home, uh, it was like it, it was the first time that I tried to look inwards, and it was very challenging to actually like find solace and peace within myself. Like, for example, in a day where I'm quarantined at home I would really struggle to like think of what to do or like how do I like live with myself for like a day like without talking to any of my friends that was a really 
new experience actually and i think it's a kind of skill slash um experience that will help me you know through times in the future i think exactly. and secondly i think after this year where after getting into university it's really changed my perception of success i think mostly uh, most business students they just want to land the best internship or like land the most popular major and I used to be the victim of this uh, like school of thought actually but I feel like most people in HQUST do their own extracurriculars and like I have friends who want to merge business with ed education like politics and design and stuff so they're really creating a path for themselves and I think that everyone should be doing this so like seeking their own path to success in life and so I'm trying to emulate that myself and like just really do what I want honestly. Both of these stories were so inspiring to hear. Thank you for your sharing. And um, now I want to lead the conversation towards education in HKUSD and specifically in our School of Business and Management a bit. Um, professor, I want to ask you, are there any specific characteristics that you have observed with uh, our business students here in HKUSD and what kind of qualities do they have and what kind of feedback can you give us as we are the business students here? So um, I think Brian has already answered the second part of my question. I was so happy to hear what you said, Brian. Um, I believe um, UST uh, students, um, definitely in the business school, are extremely motivated. They're extremely hardworking. Um, there's a Cantonese word, chur. They're a little too chur. Um, and so, you know, at the school welcome every year, I tell them, guys, chill, have fun. This is the time of your life where you try different things, have different experiences, find out what doesn't work for you because you never learn if you don't fail at something. If you're never failing, you're never learning um, and you're not progressing and growing. So um, that's what I tell the students every time um, based on my own experiences that you set a goal, so you work hard towards that goal, right? But then if you don't get there, it doesn't matter because some other door will open up for you. Um, I strongly believe that and I, I've seen that happen for myself and for many, many hundreds of students before me also. So I always tell them at the time of major selection, don't do what other people want to do. And don't do what other people, what do you think other people want you to do? You do what you want to do, because if you pick something you want to do and you like to do it, you'll spend more time at it, more effort at it, and therefore you'll do better at it. And if you do better at something, then more doors will open for you. And just as an example, I think about, okay, what's your favorite sports team, right? Um, how much time do you spend invested following your favorite sports team and how much you know about them and their history and you know who they're going to play for and who's playing with them and all of that. We all know these things like this because we love it, right? Um, a lot of people say, find your passion. And I say, that is really, really difficult. When you're 18, who knows what your passion is? Um, and that passion may change over the course of your lifetime, right? So um, just find something you like and find a way that you're not wasting your time and you're not running somebody else's race. I think that is really important. Um, and I really love what Brian said, that you'll find your own path eventually. Um, that's what life is. It doesn't end when you're 21. For sure it doesn't. <laughs> and um, what do you think, Brian? I mean, you shared your opinions about it a bit, but like, um, then let me change the question and ask you, as a business student, what have you been experiencing in your own community and what do you think about your own community? Most of my community, so let's talk about global business for a second. Um, they're extremely hardworking, I have to say, and they're extremely, how to say, they have a lot of, my friends have a lot of initiative, and they're always going out there in the world to like seek opportunities for themselves. Firstly, I really applaud that. And there's a sort of competitiveness as well that, you know, competitiveness is a double edged sword. It either helps you like get, it either helps the whole cohort get better or it gives us this kind of stress sometimes. So I think there's both parts to it. And I think Professor Adobad like really hit, hit on the point right there. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah. stress is one of the, you know, how do you say factors that affect the our business communities. Yeah. And I mean, as a fellow business student, I definitely agree with you both as well. Uh, I'm an economics major. And I think like I had to kind of um, stand my ground a lot in terms of um, 
like people were telling me to uh, to follow more orthodox ways of doing things. They were like, oh, why don't you choose global business? Why don't you choose other majors? And I was like, but I really do want to do economics. And I think that is one thing that I did right when I came to business school is that I really um, stick to my ground. And also I was not closed off to other opportunities that were presented to me. And, um, and Ryan, now let's talk about our education system from a broader perspective. What are some struggles and feelings you have towards the education scene in ancient USD? Let me think. So, firstly, I there's no way of denying that USD academics are intensive and the faculty is really determined to help us learn. Like, like they make it their mission, and I can see that from like my first year here. Um, however, I think that education in general is still subscribed to this thought of like, how do I say, memorization, I think. Uh, a lot of kind of school systems still use this kind of method to learn. And there's this common perspective that like hard skills and memorization are the only skills that the job market wants. As a, like, a, for example, as like a business student, I'm expected to learn Python and like do a banking internship and get a job at the big four. Um, yeah, I do think that current education does still try to point us in a specific direction. However, like I am trying to change this as well as some of my friends. Uh, we're trying to become all rounded like generalists. That's what we like to call like 21st century employees, which is like to be like well-informed, knowledgeable, and like be more critical about different career paths and to properly, you know, assimilate into the work. Um, the workforce knowing that like what we want to do and how we want to exactly how exactly do we want to change the world i think exactly i mean some current feelings and opinions that i want to share are so similar as well and i want to actually talk about like um about the question how well you're prepared for the challenging and competitive world out there because you can't be ready for that kind of a work if you just go with what's given to you and settle for, for the specific road paths that were put in front of you. I think um, uh, you're required to be yes, well-rounded individuals. And if you want to be industry pioneers, um, there's too much focus on grades or maybe um, choosing only specific and popular pathways will definitely not lead us there. And um, the same thing applies for the school as well, not just students, but we cannot expect students to become extraordinary individuals who lead industries or companies uh, if we only force them to specific career boxes like, okay, you do finance or you do consulting. This also wouldn't happen. In my opinion, maybe not on an individual level, but as an institution, HKUSD has the right perspective and we have many advantages here. I think the key part is to take advantage of it and use it in our advantage. And I would suggest creating a culture of um, uniqueness and well-rounded individuals who create the life that they want for themselves. Um, and just go around and explore. And I think HPOC gives us that opportunity to just go around. I think we just have to start the journey and um, start listening to maybe what other people are saying that much. Um, this would be my comments on the issue. And now, slowly, before we move on to the Q&A session at the end, I would like to ask Professor again about his new role as the Associate Provost and what are his new vision, goals, and ideas. So I think you might know where I'm going with this, which is you heard what, I, what my preferences are. And um, I would like to see more of this happening. So I was very happy to hear, for example, that Brian is minoring in psychological sciences. This is a new minor, and I was part of the team that helped design this minor. Really? Yeah. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I totally believe in this idea of whole person development. And it's partly because of that, Brian, that we have Python now in year one. Um, because uh, several, uh, you know, we got feedback from our alumni mm -hmm. that you need, not everybody has to be a programmer, mm -hmm. but you need to be able to talk to programmers. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what I tell my daughter. She wants to be a designer, but I want her to be able to talk to designers in a programming framework as well as in an aesthetic framework. Right. That's one half of it. The other half of it is something that hopefully we can implement in a couple of years is to have more emphasis on arts and well-being. 
and things like that for everybody in the university. Integrate that into the curriculum and everybody sees the value of that. After the COVID-19, I don't think anybody can say well-being is not important to know. Like, how do you take care of yourself? What Brian was saying in the beginning, how do you live within the walls of your own head for one day? You know, it's difficult, right? And we've been trying to struggle to figure that out for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so these are some of the things that I would like to sort of push more as an institution level. In a small way, we still have these with all the different minors uh, across schools. I would definitely like to see many more students five years from now taking cross school minors. Um, ultimately, we want to help each student create an identity. This is my unique identity. The moment you have a unique identity, the CGA is not a measure of you anymore. If everybody's being measured on CGA, that's the only thing, then yes, 3.65 is better than 3.25, right? But if you have an identity, then 3.65 and 3.25 are much less meaningful, maybe even meaningless. And maybe in the future, we'll have a world with no grades at all because everybody has an identity and they can just communicate, right? And if we have that, then the university itself has an identity for the undergraduate students. And people will say, I went to UST and the rest of the world will say, oh, okay, I know what you're saying right? That's, you want a vision, that's vision. <laughs> that's amazing. This was so inspiring to hear and we're so excited uh, for the future of this university as well. And uh, I want to wish you good luck with your new role as well. Thank you. And, um, now is the time for the Q&A session. And we asked HKUC students, ask you questions, Professor, and here are some of them. What does a provost or associate provost do? And what are some of the responsibilities? Ah, okay. So the provost, so um, the president is the head of the university. There are three vice presidents and a provost who report to the president. So the provost is basically the person in charge of all the academics and all the faculty for the university. And the associate provost for teaching and learning, which will be my new role, is basically on um, two things. One is to coordinate with all the different schools, associate deans and deans on the academic side. And the other is um, there are several large administrative units that help with teaching and learning. And so for students, I think the main ones you know very well are the library, um, the ARO, uh, the Center for Education Innovation, ITSC. Um, so the associate provost works with these units as well. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I think of it like as a point guard for the university who you know, takes the ball, feeds the ball, takes the ball, feeds the ball. I used to play um, not basketball, I'm not that tall. I used to play soccer in high school. It's like the midfielder. The team is built on the defense. The forwards are the ones who are doing the fancy work and interacting with everybody, the outside world. The midfielder is like the engine that keeps it going. Um, that'll be my new role. Yeah. And the third question is going to come from Brian. Mm -hmm. So, Professor, what's your favorite thing about HQUST? Ah. <laughs> um, that's a very, that's probably the most difficult question. The simple answer is the view, of course. Um, but I think, uh, you know, scratch the surface. I'm very proud of being here. I think this is an amazing organization and institution to reach the level it has reached in less than 30 years is outstanding. Even if you look at the way we've gone through this last year with all the problems that we had, I don't know if you guys know, but back in uh, March and April, we were actually conducting seminars for universities around the world on how to do online teaching. Major universities from the US and Europe were looking to us for guidance. Um, that's how far ahead of the curve we have been. I know we have not been perfect. I know that there have been lots and lots of problems, but I see the problems in other places and how they're following our lead on so many things. Um, and we're so innovative and it's so great to be at a place like this where we're always thinking, we're doing new things and you get an idea, you implement it. Right. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, move on and do something else. We, we've got that mentality, which is um, I haven't seen. I've been at other major, you know, big name universities. Um, I'm really proud of the students, the faculty and the staff. here. That is great. To be honest, I feel the same feeling. I mean, I have never been to another institution before. This is my university, but um, I, I also really am so proud to be a part of this university. And then now we actually move on to the last question. Are you a cat person or a dog person? I'm totally a dog person. <laughs> <laughs> Woof. <laughs> oh, 
Thank you so much for your answers for, and for joining our online talk show, Professor. And Brian, it was great to have you here as well. So a big thank you to you. Thank you for watching us and see you in the next episode. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.